But now that you've explained it, can I just ask, do you really think that you deserve somebody who, when you are pregnant, decides to go to a random person's birthday and if you're outside? Welcome back to the studio. We still have Cheryl with us for part two <laughs> of this conversation. Ooh. So, um, co-parenting, man. Mm. I feel like, I mean, we, we in part one, we spoke so much about, you know, yeah. choosing your father and this yeah. and that. And I feel like co-parenting, let's say, for me personally, if I already deem my ex-wife yeah. as someone who cannot be a parent, okay, would I want my child, sorry, but yeah, would I want her to take care of my child? The straight answer is no. Mm. But I don't know the rules of co-parenting. Mm. But how... It's very complicated. Yeah. I love how you're thinking about co-parenting when you have no children. <laughs> no, I say... I'm like you're, really, you're like planning for the... You're like, yeah, okay, so <laughs> if I have a child <laughs> and, and then if I get a divorce yeah. and then if I have to co-parent... Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, what, what are the rules to co-parenting? Okay, like? Can we start off with what Cheryl's situation is right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, as, sorry. As the guest. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, my situation right now is um, Elora is with me most of the time. Okay. Uh, actually... Elora is currently in Malaysia, so most of the time she's in Malaysia because oh. one, I have to work, two, I have to sort out a separation, mm. and three, I feel that it's best for her to be with my parents because my parents are retired, they spoil her rotten, like literally, and she has space to play. Now she's able to stand with a pillay pen, so mm. she likes to roam around and she's mm. very, you know, like, happy-go-lucky so I want her to experience that movement since before she starts school at 18 months so I want to let her be there first and then when she's 18 months I bring her back um, so Elora is with me most of the time uh, once a month she comes back down to Singapore but of course her dad is welcome to visit her certain times yeah that but was our agreement if she's actually. here like once a month does that mean that he sees her once a month or does he go up to KL independently I mean that's completely up to up him to we him. just figured it out so it's up to him but um, whenever he comes we will discuss upon it but for me I go back every week so three days I'm here three days I'm in KL that's why most of the time I'm like back and forth I, mm. the airport is my second home now mm. but co-parenting honestly because me and Titus both know I also have a helper so my helper actually helps watch Elleria mm. um, because I stopped breastfeeding so for the first few months actually we were taking care of her ourselves before the helper came so I was I couldn't do anything like my whole life was devoted to her but then now that she's more vocal she wants to play she wants more attention she wants to learn and stuff I feel like my parents they are more than happy to do it for me and also I know it's not a long term solution that's why mm. I told myself I'll give myself another 6 months to make so much damn money and make like myself a better person like heal as a person so that I will not inflict it upon her so that when I bring her back she will be mm. in the best place possible that I can do for well, her you know what does it look like in court mm. like what uh, you get what I mean like when you enter court and then you're like okay co-parenting do you apply for a co-parentship yeah. like, like what's that yes you have to file actually yes, you have to but file and I'm assuming he's not going to contest it because the last thing he's going to do is start taking responsibility for Elaria, right so he's not contesting anything I mean he he has his own terms I had my own terms so we just filed it we are filed in the middle of the filing it actually I think when this goes up we really just filed it um, but he has his own terms I have my own so terms so he is contesting for custody no, I'm not doing sole custody. I'm no, no, I'm no, but like with visitation, but he's not going to fight lah. Basically, I hope he's not. not going. I don't. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, no, Titus, I don't think so. Right? What's he mm. going to do? Everybody says he mm. won't lah. But I spoke to him also. I said like, realistically, do you think you can dedicate all your time to take care of her? Mm. Like realistically, because this is somebody's life, and he also said. He has to work what? Mm. He has to make money. He has to do his rice bowl. And we both agree upon it la, that this is better. But I mean, it's also a bit awkward for him to always go down to Malaysia. You know, it's, it's very, very awkward after everything that happened. Um, so I think we just need time and space yeah. uh, from it. No, but what does that look like? Like someone will have more custody care than the other one. La. Care control, I think. Okay. Yeah, because usually the kid will have to follow one parent. Okay. Right? But usually the parent is the mom. Mm. if the kid is under a certain age because um, of course I think Singapore's law uh, when it comes to children it's always the mum because 
obviously the mum was the one who physically gave birth and of course the dad has different priorities also it's mm. different unless the mum is like super mentally unstable mm. in jail or something then it's a different situation mm. yeah. most of the time it's like joint actually. yeah it's joint because like mum gets we usually so minimal disruption to the kid's life like the mum might take Monday to Friday and then the father might take weekends yeah Oh, so they go by days, lah. Like, but how do no, they? No, no. Sometimes oh, okay. there's a Depends whole bunch of different. But how do they decide who gets more time with who? You the court. You decide. No, the court decides whichever is more fit for the child. Yeah. Oh. And whichever and they might ask the child. Yeah. Also. So it doesn't matter how much you earn. No, that no. plays a factor because yeah. how can you provide for a child if I'm not working and my husband is working? Mm. I mean, That's, it would factor in, but usually it will still go to the mom. Then the father will have to pay alimony to you. Yeah. Like, what, what are some of the big factors? Like, planning a, a co-parenting Well, deal. you just have to have very good communication. Eh. For me, I struggle with that. Like, yeah. Because I think for us, the separation is very fresh. So mm. every time we talk to each other, it's like... <laughs> so it's like very, very hard to communicate. Mm. And now it's a little bit better. Like, now we are a bit more communicative. We only talk related to Elleria. So we don't talk about anything else. Like... Then he'll ask me a scheduling for Elleria, stuff like that. It's just very parent-related things. Right. But I also told him in regards to a lot of things like, you know what is best for her. So don't think about yourself, think about her. So every decision that you make, just think for her, lah, you know. Obviously, in court, like she said, there's many different ways you can proceed with a separation. Because mm. first of all, I cannot get a divorce until three years after oh, no. I'll be filed a separation. But you could get an uncontested divorce nowadays. It's easier, right? With uh, the uncontested, I don't know, but I don't know if it's short. But yeah. would it be a divorce or would it be like an annulment if you have a child? No, it's divorce. Divorce. Yeah, once you have oh. a child, it's no longer an annulment. And during these years, you cannot see anyone else also. Can lah, oh, but can. you have to legally separate lah. You know, but me and Titus, we actually um came up with an agreement, like like verbal agreement, which was very funny. This was after we separated and we met up to pack stuff. I was just like, okay, you know what? If you want to meet any other girl, you want to go on any other dates, you want to date different people, go for it. But if mm. you are serious about somebody and you know that this person is for you and you want to settle down, I think it's fair that you tell me like, hey, mm. um, this person is going to be in, out in my life. Mm. And when I visit Elleria, I hope that you are okay that this person comes along. You know, because I would do the same. I think it's only fair. You cannot mm. just out of nowhere, boom, this is a new person in your life. Mm. I mean, it will be hard. I think for both parties, it'll be like, a bit, uh, but I think it's fair that we discuss that. So there's no like conflict, you know? I think mm. that's what I told him. Like, I said, if you have to promise me one thing, just promise me this. So if you are serious about somebody, eventually, and I say, if I'm serious about somebody and I meet somebody who my daughter loves, then sure, I will mm. sit him down at a coffee shop and we're all going to talk and say like, yeah, I'm serious about this person. I hope you respect me as Elleria's mom and you're Elleria's dad. I will support you. You support me. And this person is going to be with me. So when Elleria is around and he can assure you like, that, you know, he will do what's best for her, everything, blah, blah, blah. And I think as a mom on my end, if he did that for me, I would be like, okay, yeah. Thank you for letting me know. Actually, right, that's, that's such a great good point, man. Yeah. I think it's very important. You know why? Because, I mean, I said this story so many times. The first time I met my stepmom, <laughs> was the time that my dad said I'm going to marry her oh yeah so that was actually it's quite shocking yeah it is but I was old I mean I wasn't oh. old old I was oh. like 17 okay. 18 yeah I said, I'm not under anyone's custody anymore <laughs> but it was weird it's like weird. it was weird <laughs> like if let's say and I would think like if let's say my mom had my custody and I was like 15 and like suddenly a new woman is going to come into my kid's life mm. I don't know what this girl is up to don't know, don't know what this girl is about. Well, our parents also, I'll be like, what if she yeah. Yeah. is mad? Like, yeah. you know? Yeah. What she puts shit in my <laughs> child's yeah. food? Yeah. Something, yeah. Some evil step. But, but then on shit. the other side of that would be like, not too often, are they going to be around your child? Because, um, yeah. I think the last thing, it's a little bit different, you were 17, mm. you're an adult, and you're both male. Mm. As a female, the last thing you also want to expose your daughter to is a constant or like a stream of new, too many new people in her life. Yeah. So it's like one, one that you might marry one day. Yeah. I because there is immortal such, down. immortal is a, like not a good, so good an yeah. example. Yeah. So so that's one boundary that you put like, okay, not say really boundary, one like, okay. Like a addition. point. A yeah, point. A pit. yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great Yeah, line. it's a great it's one. Important. It's, 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 it's a great one. advice, guys. Listen <laughs> yeah. up. If you guys are if fighting for apply, a divorce, yeah. listen up, yeah, or like co-parenting. So, like, were there any boundaries placed? Uh, Yeah, I guess like, honestly, okay, the funny thing is, right, I just wanted to say like, 
the moment we separated, and you know, we were co-parenting. So I just came back from Bali, right? And when I was in Bali, so many people were telling me different things. And I was just like, yo, I even texted him. I said, dude, like, why are people coming to me saying stuff? And he's like, I don't know. And I was like, dude, go live your life. Like, mm. it's, it's okay. Like, seriously. I, so me and him, we have this like, very strange relationship. I just told him like, go and live your life. I want you to be happy. Like, Wasn't seriously. Was he in Bali? He was in Bali. Separately from you? Yeah. He was with oh. like the group of um, some of okay like he was with I mean like I don't know lah mm. but I don't I don't really care but I heard a lot that's mm. all and for me I told him I went to him I said dude I, at least like you don't do anything you know like whatever it is you want to do if you're hanging on groups sure but I said anything you do be careful you trust because not everybody has your best interest at heart you know what mm. I mean and if you want to be happy go be happy I said you don't have to worry and for me I just was looking out for him because I felt like it's a bit weird, no? Like people keep telling me like, hey, but I think they don't they don't know. So I had friends who came up to me and were like, hey, why is your husband um not with you at DWP? And why is your husband here with a group of friends? And why are you not there? I saw you, but you're not there. Why where were you? I thought you were there. I said, mm. no, 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 he's not my husband anymore. Mm. Like we are we are co-parenting right now. We're trying to figure out a co-parenting thing. And actually in Bali, he did come and visit Elaria. So I brought Elaria to Bali with me. Mm. And he did come over one of the days when so when he came over. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the spa. So when he came over, I waited for him to come and I was like, ciao, bye, I'm going to the spa. So my helper was there, like, accompanying him while he just spent time with Elaria. And then when he when I came back, he was, he left really lah. So it was like very amicable. And we just have that rule on. So um, another rule that I have is because Elaria has very uh, s- fixed sleeping schedules and mm. she has a certain pattern yep. of mm. her sleeping ways. So for me, I said, you can, let's say you want to bring her out you know, during the day or you want to bring her to visit her godfather, her godmother or anything or you want to just bring her out to a nice place or you want to bring her to yours, you can. But as long as you bring her back before eight because after eight, she gets very cranky and she has her own pattern and if you mess it up one day, she will just mess it up for a really long time and I say I cannot afford that because <coughs> the next day I have to do my things also. Then he said, okay, he agrees. So until now, like, yeah, like, it's, it's going okay. Like, he's brought her out a few times ever since the separation. Everything is going okay. Like, he's been yeah. responsible so far. It's been good. Yeah. Nice. Well, if I had a daughter... Ooh. Would it change no, if it was yeah. a son? Yeah. Yeah. No. Like. Yeah. If I had a daughter, yeah. oh my lord, I was like, no other bastard can carry my daughter. <laughs> right. I swear. Like, if it's a daughter, like, if it's a son, oh. it's a different case. I feel. Okay. But if it's a daughter, I'll be mm. so overprotective. Like, no. Right. No other bastard will carry my child. Only me. But I told him, I said, like, if I find a guy who treats me, and you know, actually, Titus was very sweet. He said this to me a few days ago. He said, um, I hope you find somebody who is what you're looking for. Which I feel, uh, if, if he means it that, you. <laughs> no, but if he means it, then that's good lah. Because mm. eventually, I feel, I will find somebody that I'm looking for. Mm. Exactly the values that I'm looking for. Mm. And somebody who will, you know, obviously be a part of my daughter's life someday. Mm. And if you mean what you say, that means you accept that. Just like how I mean what I say, if anything, you meet someone, just tell me lah. Then okay lah, mm. we co-parent lah. You know, at most, you know, when, Eloria goes to you that day during her visitation when she comes to you to visit that day and she's there I just hope that girl is decent and the girl will you know take care of her as well la. Mm. either way my daughter will come back at 8 o'clock and tell me about her day so it's fine you oh, so you got time <laughs> ah. you put time ah. you will no, put 8 time. o'clock because she sleep That's I feel way. like the way that you talk about it it sounds like there's still feelings there me? yeah it, are there? no no I feel like I will always always um we'll love him love him but not, not in, in love. that way anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, feeling. I love him be- beyond that law. I just love him as a as a person, I guess. Yeah. But I don't want to be involved in his life, you know? Like, mm. it's more like you do your thing. But yeah. out of respect, I hope you respect me enough to do this. Yeah, mm. and I hope that you respect, like, you know, if example, like, it will also be rude on me if I really started dating somebody new. I'm not talking about flings. I'm saying, like, serious, like, you know, I, I love you kind of, mm. let's get together. Let's, you know, Post IG story. Okay, yeah. no, I'll never yeah. take my relationship oh. public for, okay. for a long time. <laughs> I'm traumatized. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> never again. That girl used to be you. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all get married in 14 days. Yeah, so, not. so like, if let's say he say he loved this girl, do you really believe it? <laughs> no, like that, I'll meet the girl and hopefully, mm. you know, you, because you attract what you energy uh, yeah mm. I feel so maybe I attracted that at a point in my time where I was feeling a certain way when I was my energy was off a certain way my aura was off a certain way you know my mindset was off a certain mm. way that's why I, because when I met him I was very YOLO that's why mm. I did yeah. all these YOLO things you know YOLO you know carefree yeah you were yeah. very carefree but now it's different so now going by the co-parenting right it's like 
We all have to set boundaries. Like really boundaries. Yeah. And I think this kind of thing you have to talk when you're in a good mood. If you're in a bad mood, cannot. Cannot, mm. cannot. You have to start <laughs> yelling and yelling. And like, must yeah. be in a good mood and be like, yeah, so we agree on this, we agree on this, we agree on this. What was up if let's say touch wood, mm. whatever wood is, you you are going through the same thing as well. What are some boundaries you put on your child? My child or the, oh, 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 on, like the, on the on your um I'm a very controlling person. So everything, yeah. So there's a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of things, and I would feel very angry if any of my boundaries were crossed. For example, I do not allow my child to have soft drinks. Mm. Yeah, that's what it, I thought. So diet would be one. Of my yeah, mm. huge cola cola mm. is fucking banned. Okay. And my parents gave him some cola cola. Mm. And one day I'm sitting in the car and I'm having a cola sweet that someone left in the car. And he's like, I know what that is. He said, what's that? Cola, cola. Oh, shit. I said, who let you try cola, cola? Paw, paw. Oh, oh, no. Then what, oh. what, what the fuck did you do to I, your grandmother? I, no, my mother. <laughs> uh. I was so angry. I said, I know you raised me, but if you ever give him a cola, cola again, it's the last time you'll see your grandchild. I don't give oh, a shit. single f- Oh shit! Fuck. Oh, you do not oh give my, my oh, that's fucking <laughs> child Coca Cola. Uh, yeah. okay. I'm fucking angry. Like, okay. So I go to went to his yeah. um grandma's house. I found candy, mm. uh, which is fine. You can have candy in your house. Don't give my son candy. Mm. Yeah, he's not supposed to be having candy. So I just I just threw out all the candy in their house. I just had a breakdown. <laughs> so I am a little bit controlling. I think I might have some boundaries. <laughs> Are we saying Cola Cola because it's on a flame? Because it's a brand, <laughs> Coca Cola, but okay. he doesn't know. Oh, okay. So that's so. If okay. I do meet him, I will say Cola Cola. No, you're not saying anything. Oh yeah, no, just, yeah. Give just, him water, some just water, just water, plain water. Just plain water. What the yeah, fuck just water. You need to give a yeah, 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 Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking four. And yeah, you need yeah, to give him yeah. Cola Cola. Yeah. No, do you know my sister once. <laughs> dude, my little sister had six cavities one time. Six cavities. We used to have a cola, cola every day. Mm. That is how badly raised I was. I had six cokes a day from my, I mean, one coke a day. Until my, my sister had six cavities. I never wanted that to be with my child. This is not going to be my child. Mm. Yes, wow. So, so we are, once we cross the cola, cola bridge, then we'll talk about what time you're going to get her home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. we're not even there because I'm, I'm not tested. Mm. Okay, yeah. then that's your luxury. <laughs> what well, I can't, what well, well, it's co parenting is so yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. there's so many it's just problems. boundaries for kids. No, but I it's know. Tough. Yeah, no, but it's but really you have tough. no vision of, let's say now Titus brings her out. You have no vision of that. Yeah. You get that's I mean? why I bring my, I, okay, another rule is my helper has to follow at all times and my helper has to take photos. But there's something that can be contested. So I saw this case in the US and it was a very big case where like the dad gave the daughter iPhone. This daughter is a is for like 14, 15 years old and mm. the mom confiscated it as a punishment because her daughter was very rude mm. and just using the cell phone all the mm. time not doing her work. Excuse me. Father says you have no right to confiscate the daughter's handphone because I bought it mm. for her. So you actually have no right. And it went to court and the court said sorry you have to give her back or give him back the cell phone. You can't confiscate it. Wow. Wow. So that's one of the really hard things that you have to contend with. And when they are babies, then it's just you versus him. But then when they're an adult, now it's... Or not an adult, but when they are a teenager, now it's three people. Mm. Mm. So Gosh, that's another level. Idea, yeah. Which I had to process in five seconds. You will process it. <laughs> Where do you get there? Yeah. But now it's just... I, mean, I, like, yeah, I read so many news of like co-parenting of like some... Like the wife, the ex-wife will buy the, the child a uh, uh, Apple Watch uh-huh. because the custody went to the dad. <laughs> Right, then but they can the track, uh, right? Can track. Ah. Then he was she was secretly send messages to the son or to the daughter to leave the ah. the, the father. Right. So one day, um, the father brought her out to an ice cream place. I'm not sure if I'm getting this story exactly correct. Mm. <laughs> it can just be a fictional story, no worries. Yeah, but yeah. She, and then she called the police and said, <gasps> "I saw that my daughter is got kidnapped." Oh, I saw this because of the message yeah right, right. so then the police came to the wherever he's at boom straight away bring the guy down boom 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 and then the guy was like whoa whoa, whoa she's my daughter she's my daughter and then the, and the police didn't believe because the report was my daughter got kidnapped this place where where everything so she knew everything so she right. made everything up wow. that sounded like this guy this person really got, got kidnapped the, she made the daughter not say anything 
Yeah, yeah. so the doctor didn't say like that's my father or anything. Wow. That's mad. That's wow. Ah. It's no, but crazy. why would people do that though? Then that's, that's a reflection of the mom's character. Ah. That's why I say no other bitch can carry my daughter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you also cannot control that because but if not, then yeah. I, I will just be like, oh, then you cannot, you cannot let <sighs> them Until she's 18. Person. No, like, I feel like at the end of the day, I want to create a healthy communication yeah. line with Elleria. So with my daughter, I'll be like, okay, how was your day with daddy? And then mm. let's say if anything, like the iPhone situation, if that happened, I didn't want to give Elleria a phone and, and he gave Elleria a phone. Let's say that happened. I'll just tell him, I'll call him and say like, have you really thought this through? Mm. Like, is this what you want her to be like? Mm. If, if it is, then we have some differences in values that we need to talk about. La. But if not, I hope that you can understand where we come from. It's not about who li- who she likes more or whatever it is. Because obviously, if you give a kid an iPhone, they're probably going, oh, I love my dad more. Yeah. I love my dad more. And they're going to pick a side. But it really also like selfish to think that way that parents should, kids should pick a side, which they never should in my opinion. Mm. Unless it is really, really detrimental, then what's the point of that then you're just thinking for yourself you're not thinking for her what, what, if, that, what if that really happens though what if she, every time she yeah, comes I'll call she say, I, I want to meet daddy every time she go back she say I don't want to be here I want to see daddy then I'll just talk to her and ask her why mm. that would be painful man yeah, yeah. Why. I mean it would be painful But you know but parenthood is painful Yeah parenthood yeah. is painful <laughs> A lot of things are very painful In your parent But I'm very optimistic And semi-delusional uh, So I, I do not I do not think about so All these negative things little... I don't think it's semi <laughs> I, I think that's like The importance of like Fighting for a very strong Custody agreement You know it's very easy To like Be like so many things Are going on We're figuring out a divorce We're decoupling The house mm-hmm. Moving out All these things and then the custody falls sometimes to the background and there will always be someone who's a little bit like, ah, whatever lah. You know, sometimes it's very tempting. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Where one parent doesn't fight and then regrets it later. I think that's the important thing right now yeah. is to really like fight for your daughter. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, but I mean... I don't doubt that you are though. <laughs> like, you're a fighter. Like, I don't doubt that you're really fighting. Really? Yeah, no, you, you're a fighter. Yeah. But I know you're fighting for her. I, I feel like, okay, from my opinion... This entire relationship, I could tell that you are the one trying to fight like, for Yeah, it. like you are basically doing everything, lah. Mm. Is it? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah for we, the lack of a better we thought, phrase, we thought some things were strange. To yeah. be, to like be honest, what? like um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my friend had a birthday party, and then she invited. She he didn't. In, he told me he didn't invite you. Um, but then I texted you. I asked my friend, can. Um, Cheryl come She's outside And then She said of course Then I said Titus Wouldn't you invite your wife Straightforward I just thought this was odd I understand everyone has a different arrangement But I just thought this was odd My friend was having a birthday party I was inside the club Yeah And Titus was invited So I was with Titus And I said Isn't your wife pregnant Shouldn't you be home with her wife Because As a pregnant lady If the father of my child went out But once again We've established I'm crazy I would have No you're not crazy Fucking lost it I would have taken my shoe off And stabbed it through his eye If he told me That he wanted to go out To a person Who he doesn't know's birthday Mm. Best friend is Maybe You can meet him in the daytime But um, Then I was like Where's your wife And he was like Oh she's outside And I said outside Like what's outside 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 the club Mm. So I was like, she's waiting for you outside the club? He's like, yeah. And I was like, why didn't you invite her? And then he was like, oh, I don't know. I was like, what do you mean you don't know? So I I asked my my friend, like, can he help his pregnant wife come? And she was like, where's his pregnant wife? Like, why, it wasn't, why didn't she come? And I was like, she's, she's outside. She's waiting outside. She, then I texted you and I was like, do you want to come in? And you're like, I'm getting brownies. <laughs> yeah, I was getting brownies. And she was like walking around like alone outside the club. I was getting brownies. And I was like, Titus, why didn't you invite her in yeah. side. I mean, and he was like, I don't know, maybe like she wants brownies. I thought that was odd. I didn't, I didn't know what to make of that situation. I was like, okay, Gen Z things. Maybe it's a Gen Z thing. Yeah, I mean, like, what, what? I mean, we could, I think everyone could tell. No, like, you were at the front seat, lah. I don't know. I'm old, right? Really? So yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, so maybe you can tell me what the fuck happened. Really? Or oh, rather, that's my assumption. Okay, la. why oh, do you assume we... that? I want to hear why he assumes it. They'll answer my brownie. <laughs> my yeah. brownie situation. Uh, we thought this was a Gen Z thing. Like Gen Z's, you know, you see Gen Z's don't like to go clubbing. Mm. No. So maybe she didn't want to go clubbing. She wanted brownies. But I also thought maybe he should have asked her if she wanted to come. Also, we are talking about this situation itself. Huh? Mm. Why he didn't want you there? Or what? Why, why would you do that? No, why the fuck <laughs> was that situation happening? Is that a Gen Z thing that I don't understand? Am I just mm. old? No, it's not. It no, is it's, not. It's, it's it not. You, you don't know. You're not conscious, Gen Z. No, no. Okay, whatever whatever, whatever fucking generation it is, you walk to the club with your wife. 
And then leave her outside. That's yeah. what he did. So it's not Gen Z, it's not whatever generation. It's just who you are as a person. Mm. Why would would you do that? No, th- that's why I say maybe it's a Gen Z thing. We cannot comprehend it. Mm. Okay. I mean, like personally, I I, I don't enjoy clubbing. Um, <laughs> if my girlfriend tell me like she want go clubbing, or like if we are outside, like I don't know, having dinner or whatever, mm. then she like, oh, I'm going to meet my friend with clubbing. Or like meet my friend inside the club for a while or whatever. I, I don't think I'll be that upset waiting for her well, outside the club. While you're pregnant? Oh yeah, that's, that's a different thing <laughs> la, of course. Yeah. If, yeah, If I'm pregnant, then we gotta go and talk to some scientists because that's not even fucking scientifically possible. <laughs> but like that, yeah, like I, I I am not against waiting for my partner outside a club. While well, you're pregnant, but I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's a different. Yeah, la. okay. Heavily pregnant. Yeah, no. Let's, I mean, it, it might look like it. Let's streamline <laughs> this better. Let's, let's okay, okay. be clear. This is three a.m. Mm, I, I understand why you're upset. I'm, 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 I'm not upset. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm yeah. confused. Okay, okay, I'm confused. Okay, it's I don't have the answers more. you're looking for, Jay. I'm sorry. Okay, wait. <laughs> let her uh, from a yes. guy perspective. How about she answer? Uh, yeah, okay, wait, wait. I, I want to hear your perspective. From a guy perspective, the only reason why I would do that is uh. because I want to hit the other girls. There's no club rules where a pregnant lady cannot come in, mm. right? Other yeah. than other sh- if she's like more than like six months pregnant, I guess. But that's like not advice. Yeah, okay. Mm. But you, you you get what I mean? Yeah. Why would I not? I would want to know that my wife is sitting down. Motherfucker, mm. she's pregnant, dude. She has to be sitting down. Mm. And for me to walk into the club, yeah. not giving a fuck, if my wife finds a seat, it's 3 a.m. What fucking restaurant is open, okay? But she got herself a brownie. Oh, so I don't know, know where you got the brownies. Yeah, I don't uh, know. You know the one outside the LV dome? Like and the it's LV, open? Until it, was, it was open for dessert, like last till order. what time? I don't know, like 2, 3 Oh, so time. okay. So you yeah, were there the, the whole time? That kind, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I would want to know my wife is safe. Oh, no, but that day I went into the casino for a while too. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually what happened that day was, okay, he nice. told me that he's actually going uh, to a friend's party. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. But then I also didn't want to ask, like, could I come? So I just keep quiet. And then I say, never mind, like, I go casino, Lord, then you go have fun, I go have my fun. Mm. And then I say, like, I'll go eat a brownie, and then I'll just go casino. I'll say, I'll go eat something. I say, I'll wait for you, like, it's okay. But do you really mean that? Or like, you were waiting no, for No, she invite? really meant I, that. I and really I, did it. I invited oh. her in. I was like, please come. And then she was just, I think, Paisa. So she's like, no. No mm. one. Yeah, I just I, I'm very happy la. having brownies. I was like, no, the fuck you want? I was like, Clytus, can you go outside? Get your wife, and either you stay with her at the brownie place. <laughs> And then send her home. Mm. Or you drag her inside and say, come meet my friends. Mm. And he was like, no lah, she don't want. Then at that point, I was like, I, maybe it's a Gen Z thing, but I think that you guys don't know how to express what you want. Mm. You yeah. don't know how to tell him, hey, fuck, no, I'm pregnant. We are not going out. Or like, hey, fuck, I want to go. Can I come? Especially when I was pregnant, I really didn't mind going out. It was just more of like, how do I put it? Like, I just wanted more... Okay, I think when I was pregnant, right, it was a lot of emotions at once. During that time, my personal life was also a mess. I was going through a lot of weird stuff, like really a lot of weird, weird things, like with friends, with my mind. My mind was a mess, okay? So I didn't want to always stay at home and coop up at home. I enjoyed going out to go and walk around, uh, walk around the casino, talk to some random people there, go and get a Milo, or like go walk around. I really enjoyed it. And like for me, I just, obviously I wanted to cling on to him you know it's like that feeling of just wanting to cling on to your partner Mm -hmm. and you just want to feel that safe 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 space and that security with somebody that somebody is taking care of you and I guess if you don't get that safe space that safe mentality then you become a very like alpha male then you take the front seat and everything then you are forced to develop the mindset where I have to do everything on my own you know Mm -hmm. like mentally on your own so it depends. But for me, I was okay. To be honest, that brownie night, I really didn't feel <laughs> brownie, very like upset. I, I, I mean, I had, I had worse nights than that. That night was a good night. I even enjoyed my, my would, stroll in the casino. I would say then you are accepting the love that you think you deserve mm-hmm. and I still don't feel that you... You deserve that. You still yeah. don't think that you're that worthy of... Yeah, that was a... I you do not feel... Do. Just mm-hmm. based on what you said, because I didn't know why, but now that you've explained it, can I just ask, do you really think that you deserve somebody who when you are pregnant decides to go to a random person's birthday and if you're outside. At that time, I've, yeah. I, and now? Now wow. I don't, no. No. No, now of course Hell not. no. But last time, I, I really did. Because at that point of my life, right, um, during that specific period, I lost a lot, a lot of people like that were my friends and, you know, possibly mainly due to, like I said, that's why I said just not my, my mouth is like a double-edged sword, good and bad. Yeah. Um, 
possibly to that reason and maybe because I wasn't thinking straight. So for me at that time, I really thought that oh, all I had was him. All I had was him. You know, I, I knew nobody else in Singapore. All I had was him. He was my home. He was my family. He was my best friend. He was everything to me, you know. So at the time, that was all I had and all I wanted. So I thought, okay, I have to do whatever it takes to accommodate to that. And like, I think when I was pregnant also, a lot of it was a blur because a lot of things that I knew and obviously, you know, I I got to learn off over time. I had to block it out, block it out, block it out because for me, it was more like, I love this person, I love this person. I, I always thought that I could change him, I could change him, I could change him. I could make him become the man that I want him to be. Mm. I could fit him into a mold that I wanted him to be. And that was the, I think that was what I was so obsessed with for a very long time. And then when Eloria came out, my daughter came out, it was even more into that. Like, you need to be this person, you need to be this person. Mm. And then the expectation kept kept increasing, increasing, increasing. And he, yeah. obviously for him, it was a big pressure on him as well. That's why I understand his point of view as well, you know. But the, but the, honestly, that that whole thing at the time, yes, I accepted the love that I thought I deserved because I genuinely thought I deserved only that. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. we always say this on the show, right? <laughs> we are not Bob the Builder. <laughs> we cannot fix it. Yeah. yeah. Because when a guy comes to you with his trauma, you're not like, you are trying to compete with childhood trauma. And how can you compete with childhood trauma? It's yeah. so hard. To be honest, I didn't even know what childhood trauma was until I experienced it. Because I have no childhood trauma. That's great. Mm. So I don't Incredible. know. That's why for me, like, wow, when I saw somebody like this, I was like, oh shit, I don't know how to handle it. That's why maybe at that time, I thought, like, all my friends call me delusional. Like, but honestly, I felt like it was more of the hope that I had. Because I... I'm given so much hope in me. You know what I mean? No, so I agree. I, yeah. I, I want to have that hope on others. So it's like, it's like partial delusion to a certain rate because like people will tell me, like my friends will tell me like, dude, at this rate, right, you are just being stupid. Like you're really just being stupid if you think that shit this way is the right way. Like, no, it's not, you know? Mm. And you ask me now, what kind of love I think I deserve? Oh, hell no. Obviously not mm. whatever I was going through back then and all these things. But I also don't blame him because I never set that boundary. I was like, yeah, you, you can. So I allowed him to do these certain things. I allowed mm. it to happen that way. If not, I would it wouldn't have happened right? because I would have set that boundary. Right? But I allowed it. So technically, I also cannot just, oh, it's your fault, your fault, your fault. It's my fault too. It's an equal amount of yeah. things to hands to clap. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to co-parenting, what do you think would be the, the toughest thing for you? Me? Yeah. I mean, obviously the toughest thing is like accepting the fact that my daughter will have to grow up with this family choice. And for me, it's unfamiliar. So I'm also tackling it for the first time. Mm. She's tackling it for the first time and we're both like, shit, now I need to be the person, you know, in charge of this, but I have never experienced it before. So it's tough on me too, but I, I told myself that I'll just do my best. Like, I'll do whatever it takes, you know? So, my mentality is this. The main thing, thing people are concerned about as single mothers is financials, right? Mm. But actually, financials is not my main concern. My concern is more of the emotional aspect. Like, I always believe money, we can always earn back. Yeah, you spend it, you earn it. It's, you spend it, you earn it. It's a cycle. But mm. more is the emotional aspect. Like, I want to be able to make sure that I can nurture her in a way where she can understand why this happened to her. It's not her fault. And it's not, something that I want her to bring into her life with that trauma like oh shit this happened to me and this happened to me because you know maybe I was the trigger point I don't ever want her to be in that position where she feels oh shit my parents didn't work out because of me mm. um, my parents didn't blah 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 because of me or my mom is feeling a certain way because of me that's why I felt the best way to heal from that is to fix myself first and then be able to think about a foolproof like long term plan on how I can nurture her how I can communicate her build that communication like I, I personally only started really communicating with my mom when I was 16 so when I was a kid I didn't know but of course I didn't have to deal with this before so it's my first time too so mm. I guess the only thing I can say is just have faith huh? mm. yeah I think unconditional love produces unconditional faith so I just have to Roll Amen. with it, yeah. Like you don't know, you have to learn, what If not, how? Cannot. What? Yeah, no I guess that's book. one of the. <laughs> as in, like for me as a fan, I'll tell you, yeah, that, that's actually a very big concern. Like mm. growing up without a f Father whatever, figure. no, whatever kind of figure in your life. Yeah. Yeah, and as a, it doesn't matter the the sex of the child, because mm -hmm. I feel like I a big huge part of my life I didn't grow up with a father figure. Mm. Mm. I haven't really felt like how it affected me yet, but maybe when I have a child. Okay. I think that is when it will affect me. But some people never want to figure out. Some people just block it out for the rest of their life. Yeah. yeah so it's like, maybe I don't know how to take care of this child. Because like, what? Mm. What is a father? <laughs> Good mm. question. 
Yeah. yeah. But like from my perspective, <laughs> I'm I think bringing up a child and you have all of these responsibilities on you and all of these things that you can try and control to the best of your ability. One thing you cannot control is really um, how their friends in school will talk to them. I thought about mm. this already before mm. I separated. I thought it through, mm. sisters. I thought it through. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. I, I thought it through to what people will say, mm. if people will bring things up, if people will bring her, her father's past or my past to her. Mm. Um, I thought about how I will tell her and explain it to her mm. and yeah, before I separated, I already thought about this. Actually, before I even decided to uh, have a child, I thought about it mm. before. But of course, it, it evolved over time. You know, mm. it started off as a pinpoint. Mm. Um, the option was always on. Just take her out somewhere for school. Mm. So people don't. But I realized yeah. one thing, you know, like now that I'm separated, it's a different story. Like mm. I always want to tell her this, like in the future, if she watches this, like your father is not you and your mom is not you. Uh-huh. you. You are you. So whatever people say about you, about whatever... I mean, for me, I don't I don't think I have anything that concerning of, you know, in my history books that is like, oh, I did this, did this, that can be pointed out or like things that I made fun of, you know. Mm. I mean, if you're talking about the missing parent aspect, like one parent not not present in the family, mm. a lot of kids made, get made fun of that. And that, yes, creates trauma. But that's mm. when also at the same time, as a parent, the parent that is caretaking, you have the choice and responsibility to nurture them, to normalize it in their life. Mm. But if you're saying like, oh, career choices or like, you know, um, Specifically, how do I put it in a nice way? Like, um, specifically, her parents' past, you know, like she can just Google next time. Yeah. So for me, I feel the importance of me trying to explain it to her is more important, you know, hearing it from me. That's why that relationship of nurturing has to start from young, where you communicate. The the biggest fear I actually had is um like that's why in the beginning I didn't wanna put my daughter's life online for mm. one main reason also because I didn't want anybody to make fun of her. Mm. But then I realised no matter what people make fun of her anyway. Mm. And maybe this is my own parenting thoughts, you know, but I feel if I could go through something like this of whatever I'm going through of accepting, you know, a person that I love's past as a whole and a person's future, then my daughter can too. I mm. mean, it, it's tough, yes. And I'm going to be there, yes. Um, will it mentally maybe take a big toll? Yes. Mm. But I believe that I'm somebody's daughter too and I could get through it so she can get through it too as long as she has the right support like through this whole, through this whole separation to be honest I'm very thankful that I got like the best support that made me really wake up and realise like what I deserve and what I want as a person what I want for my daughter how I'm going to fight for my daughter um, how am I going to go moving forward the right things to say the right things to think the right time to react everything matters you know so for me I was very very thankful and I'm still very thankful until today that all the few many few people and through this separation so I realised who my real friends are to mm. be honest it's crazy to how I thought wow these people cared for me and mm. they never and this is a process of life I think eventually my daughter will also have to go through this so yes it's scary but she has to what because mm. like I said I, I made that conscious choice to choose this when I gave birth to her. So yes, that is my consequence to bear. But it's also, because it's my consequence, I wouldn't take it and mope around forever. I might as well turn that consequence into something more meaningful and actually nurturing her into becoming a stronger woman. Ah. Yeah, she won't be normal, that's for sure. But yeah. like, she won't live a normal life, you know? But mm. I'm not normal either. <laughs> so yeah, but to, anybody to, is, to, to be, be on the other side of the coin, um, you are 20 too. Yeah. So you dealing with it doesn't reflect how a child might deal with it. And yeah. it just, like, based on what you said, no, because I don't have anything against parents posting their kids online. Like, it's cute mm. and whatever. Like, other people's children is your own. But ba- just based on what you said, it seems unnecessary mm. to post. Wouldn't you agree that? Um, you're, so you're acknowledging that there would be bullying or trauma that arise, arises from it. Then in that case, wouldn't it be unnecessary bullying and trauma? It would be, but her name is not. It's not a common name. Mm. But know? people would not know like her face, and she wouldn't need to have more online, unless your position is just that. Like I just want to share cute stuff with the world. I get it, but uh, based on the trauma thing, then it seems a little bit unnecessary to add extra trauma or to add extra exposure to mm. someone that is so, so young. Mm. That's another thing that I thought about in the social media aspect of it because now she's still a child, right? Like she's a baby. No one will recognize her, yeah. 
Yeah, but when we will recognize, recognize her, that's when I'll give her a choice. But of course, mm. when she has that choice, of course, I'm going to tell her, like, list out pros and cons in bullet point form. I, I don't... Obviously, if you tell a kid, you are going to get nice things. They're going to be like, yes, I want it. You know, I want mm. it. But I will give her the pros and cons. And yeah. actually, okay. like... for oh, Nice things, do you mean finan- the financial? No, like... As no, as what, what do you mean by nice things? Nice things as in, of course, kids. Okay, example, you see, you go on TikTok and you see how many kid... kid um, Famous kids online. Right, right, but right. at what toll is it costing right. them? I mean, when his baby is fine, their face will change. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think when kids hit like two, two years old, I think that is the stage where they will learn to communicate. They will learn to make certain choices. Yes, no on their own. Mm. And that was my age. Actually, I planned to stop um, all of this when Ellera actually started 18 months of her school. I didn't want to share because I don't really like to share my <laughs> plans. But I, did, I wanted to stop all of this when she turns 18 months. Because I do like sharing cute stuff in the world. And I feel, yeah. in my opinion, um, especially throughout my separation, uh, I had a lot of single moms actually approach me to share their journeys. And them just seeing my daughter's smile makes them happy. And I feel a certain... I feel like I'm given a platform. So I might as well use it for a greater good. Mm-hmm. However, I do agree on the aspect where when people can recognize her and the internet... I mean, it really depends on what yeah. the both of us decide to do that's why for me I just decided to focus more into a work direction than just posting random things mm. from now yeah. but my plan was actually to just fully cut it at 18 months mm. um, ever since the separation even for her little posting account that I just post for her like, like cute photos yeah. that I think very cute and I just wanted to keep it there keep I just privated everything mm. already actually I just didn't want to like once in a while I think it's okay but when she hits that two year old mark especially which is like 18 months to 24 months I think it's a it's a time to let them see because I don't I mean I have nothing against it like I said babies are cute kids are cute online mm. but my situation is different <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of history yeah I, yeah, I think know? it's kind of it's fine when parents like I, I honestly don't think it's wrong to monetize kids mm. and honestly mm. the mummy industry is like booming mm. because what would I rather right like a mom and the kid have no money or the mom and the kid share like family family con- family friendly content and, mm. and, and, and and the mom gets an income a good income from that yeah. that is keeping her at home with the child you know as a mommy influencer you have home you have home time with the child yeah. it, for me I just don't do it because I have the luxury not to but it's a luxury mm. yeah. but I understand why you would not do it if you think that there might be like some trauma will you like think about ways to get around it. So like, for example, right, now I do a lot of content. I mean, I do some content with Tian Hao and he's been very helpful. Mm. So he lets me like come on his videos and I do guest appearances so that in that way, to kids, I'm also cool. Mm. When the kids come over to the house like that day, um, my private, my banker, she came over to the house and she brought her, her kids and the kids were like, oh my God, that's Miss Natalie. So in that way, <laughs> I still... Would, maybe you could consider doing things like that so that you can be that cool mom. You can yeah. still get in there. I mean, for me, I think when my daughter is two, I will give her the choice. I mean, obviously, I can see through her body language. I'm her mom. I will yeah. know. Um, but ultimately, like, I feel... But a choice at two months is that... Sorry, at two years, is that a choice? Can kids really make a consent? That's you- why I will see her, her figures. But I don't think, for me, I don't think the... Because I'm, I'm pretty young. And for me, I feel... Yes, the mummy industry is very good. Yes, if, maybe if I have a second child, it's a different story someday. But right now, I'd rather just start new businesses. Huh? And that's tough because now you have to contend with whether Titus will want that content. What content? Like, right. Because now, go back to what we were saying about co-parenting, it wouldn't even be your cho- entirely your choice anymore. Yeah. I told him no posting. But oh, okay. again, anymore. that's you. Mm. Does no, he, I told him not to post. No, them. no, but th- oh. again, then that is what you are telling him. But one day, then you have to understand that in a co-parent, you would have to seek control. And you can be like, don't post. And he can say, I'm the dad. Yeah. So it's very tough. I, I don't think he will. Okay, at least for now. For now. Yeah, mm. for, now, for now. What I can safe to say is... For now, he yeah. won't. La. Definitely he won't, not. Yeah. And it's not I mean, like all that. it takes is for a client and go like, hey, Titus, we want your daughter on something. Um, the deal is that's so $50, tough $50, I don't even know yeah that's yeah, so I tough would, to be linked together I would say no la. but obviously it depends at the time who has no, what I'm saying is for, even though you say no for him to go against you all it takes is like a big yeah. deal mm. like a big 
deal of like monetary deal. Then it's what can I do? Uh, I, yeah, I, it's, at the end of the day, it's a it's a reflection of the person's character, not my. But speaking of businesses, I heard you launched a new business. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. 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 Plug? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Um. So basically, I I started this. I actually had this goal to start something when I was pregnant because I was like having really bad breakouts, right? And then when I was pregnant, I was trying out different things. And actually, I had an initial plan that failed because I was super traumatized by a super traumatizing incident at the point I almost gave up on it because I was like shit I cannot trust anybody anymore I trusted mm. this person and this person screwed me over and I was like you know what I'm not gonna do it but by God's grace I met an amazing partner and she just helped me She, I told her my story I told her my vision I said exactly what I wanted to do I wanted to make something that works that is affordable and can actually help people not mm. just a uh, money making scheme like I'm not in it to make the money the money is important yes but at the same time I wanted to make something that would actually help and would actually give people nice skin and when people drink it it tastes good mm. and it's also diabetic safe and all of that and I said the whole reason I'm doing this is for Elleria so at least I have a sustainable passive income source where I don't have to worry like all oh, this month do I have enough clients or what because I feel at the end of the day Yes, I love my online career, but it's out of passion. If I rely on it for money, then it will not be out of passion anymore. Mm. Then I will just be like every every Tom, Dick and Harry doing it just for money. I mm. mean, I'm not saying a lot of people do, but the reality is in this world, a lot of people do it for money. Mm. Like a lot of people do everything for money, yeah. right? Mm. But for me, the way I rely on money will come from different angles. Ah. And my main angle is actually just to, actually my, my ideal life goal is to make passive income from different sources uh, work maybe two three hours a day and mm. most of the time spend it with my daughter so wow. as as much as she's going to school I will also homeschool her when she comes home and we will communicate so it will always be a bond a communication bond and that's what I want I just actually honestly I just want a simple happy life now like, that's not what you just yeah. <laughs> said but yeah congratulations on your new business thank yeah. you yeah. and can I just say like guys we are like looking like you are looking at her through a screen but we are sitting with her in real life and her skin is like... Glowing. It's <laughs> fucking flawless. It's also yeah. because I'm happy. It's, 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 it's both, it's both the product it and the single glow. I don't know if it's what you're drinking. It's both, yes. If it nobody... If okay, no, I got to send yeah. all of you but boxes to she's try. she's glowing. Yeah, she's and glowing. And you're like some of your acne, like from pregnancy. When you're pregnant, you had a few. Oh, I had a lot. Yeah, a and lot, it's lot. like gone. Yeah. So, but it's not an anti-acne product, right? It's a collagen yeah. drink. Yeah, and Pepsides. it actually helps with UTIs because I have a lot of UTIs. <gasps> yeah, so if you're a UTI's queen. UT queen? UT yeah, you UT queen? <laughs> you go too hard, it's okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So if you come to the end of this episode, I hope you guys liked it. Um, Thank you, Cheryl, for sharing. You Thank shared you. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for all the uh, insights and new fears to unlock. Correct. <laughs> to you. If, if you are dating someone and you think of getting married in like two weeks, don't do I it. I think rethinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rethinking. Yeah. No, but I would like to edit this episode with I think one of the greatest quote that was said by the both of you mm. that your children cannot choose their parents mm. you can and how. Their, how their parents are chosen is by your by you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that was super off on how uh, yeah. we phrase it, yeah, but no. let Jade phrase it. Okay, actually she, come, go ahead, just cut back to the before. original. <laughs> well, you can just cut back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was that, you know, you your kids can't choose their, their parents. Their parents, yeah. Yeah, so fathers and mothers. I'm not I'm not citing women here, but... <laughs> that's why I said, no, but that's why I said. <laughs> but you can choose the father. I mean, as a woman, your you partner. can choose the father. You can choose the partner. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, and one more, one more, more. I have one more. Uh -huh. um, every child deserves a parent, but not every parent, parent deserves, deserves a, a child. child. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, wait. Wow. No shots taken at yeah. anyone. No shots taken, yeah. It's just a great. great uh, when, I, when I said that, I was thinking of my own father, so not Titus. Titus, yeah. uh, Titus okay, is okay. a good man. I was yeah. thinking of my own dad. Yeah. Okay, yeah. to be fair, to be fair, right? I. I mean, before we end, I just wanted to say that we're not here to, I'm especially me. Okay, I'm not here to like personally poke or flame anybody. Like I genuinely feel that every like, especially in our situation, we genuinely just had differences, and that's it. It was just yeah. different frequencies, different personalities. That's it. No foundation. That's it. There's nothing. There's no your fault, my fault, your fault, my fault. Because at the end of the day, like. Yeah. It was it was a great run, so I'm thankful yeah. for it. And like, let's yeah. close the chapter. Goodbye. Yeah. I, I I agree. I don't think you said like you didn't say one bad thing about yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to all the single mothers, <laughs> to all the singles, single fathers, doing your best, <laughs> sending you love. Yeah. 
Um, if, if anything, I think. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, but if anything, I think like you didn't say anything bad mm. about Titus at all, which I can really respect. Yeah, me too. Because really? I would not be like that. Mm. Would not yeah. be like that. Even if it was uh, my fault. <laughs> if me or Jay gets a divorce, y'all know how it's gonna go down. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you didn't say one bad thing about him. But, but one thing but, that I think that really came true is how much you care about your daughter yeah. and how much you love yeah. your daughter. Yeah, and everything so she does like, is. I feel like if she ever sees this one day, she's gonna be like, "Oh my god, the amount that I was I mean, love." Care of me. Yeah, the amount yeah, that I was love. Is that what she was sound like? It's dude? crazy. <laughs> Yeah. No, she's not. Yeah. So now, before y'all make fun of Cheryl thing, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, she's a yeah. single mother. I tell you, <laughs> around, uh, what's your mom? Yeah. Okay, I mean, single mothers do get made fun of too. I mean, that's fine because we're still human beings, you know. Yeah. We're still human beings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, But before people type that comment, you just yeah. remember that there's like a real person behind that mm. who's. Yeah. Yeah. Trying their real best. Problems, real problems. Trying their best for and their daughter. And we are living in a declining birth rate situation. So <laughs> single mother yeah. actually are that much more important to our society. Yeah. Wow. So wow. So thank that's you, a, the two of you. That's a true yeah, Singaporean it's, it's facts. Right. It's facts. <laughs> it's facts. Yeah. 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 If you guys have anything you'd like us to talk about, let us know in the comment section below. If not, we'll see you guys in the next episode.